Hey, I'm back again with Professor Zakib Mahmoud to talk about type 3C diabetes. Yes, thank you so much, Hala. So type 3C diabetes is one of the diabetes types which is not really known to many healthcare professionals. And I have a very good saying about that. Their eyes will not see what the mind doesn't know. And this will be presenting to you all the time in your clinical practice and we will miss it. We will misdiagnose it as type 2 or type 1 and until it's quite late and complications occur. So type 3C diabetes is one of the uncommon diabetes which happens to people who've previously had an episode of acute pancreatitis and a few years later they will become diabetic. Uh, also those patients who have had a long history of alcohol or they have chronic pancreatitis, they develop this type of diabetes. So what when we talk about diabetes, we always think about the endocrine side of the pancreas. But we must understand that pancreas has two sides. One side is the endocrine, which secretes insulin and glucagon. The other side produces the digestive enzymes, the enzyme that we need to digest the carbohydrates, which is the amylase, to digest the protein. We have protease and to digest the fats, we have lipase. So what happens in type 3C diabetes or pancreatogenic diabetes is the entire pancreas is atrophic or it's destroyed or it is non-functional and therefore it will neither produce the enzymes and also it will have less of the uh, endocrine side working which means the insulin will be reduced or maybe uh, not even secreting insulin so they will become kind of like type 1 plus another defect which is the digestive defect so they won't have digestive problems which will always be misdiagnosed as IBS or a side effect of a medication that we give. So one of the things that you need to pick out in your patient is that see what the patient is look like. If you're saying it's a type 2 diabetic patients, type 2 diabetic patients are usually insulin resistant, they are overweight, they are obese. If somebody comes in with a low BMI, BMI of 21, 23, they present at late age with diabetes and it's been labeled as type 2, question that. Then look at the past history, if the patient has a long history of alcohol consumption or if the patient has preceding history of acute pancreatitis. If that is the case and the patient is now presented with high blood glucose, it is very likely that this patient has got type 3C diabetes. One of the tests that you can do to confirm this diagnosis is a test called fecal elastase. So it's a stool test where we measure the elastase and normally the results will come back as um, severe or mild pancreatic insufficiency. So if the level of fecal elastase is less than 200 it is a positive test if it's less than 100 it is severe deficiency and the treatment for these type of patients is twofold one is the replacement of the enzymes which is called creon which is the pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy and then also give them insulin so they need both so they are like type 1 with in addition to enzyme deficiency so these people will also present with nutritional deficiencies like low albumin, low ferritin, low B12, so anything like malabsorption plus they will have muscle wasting. If these patients are not appropriately treated, it can be a fatal condition. So normally you will have a type 2 patient you, or you will misdiagnose it. You will then give them metformin. They will complain bitterly about side effects of bloating then you will switch that off you will change it to modified release and they will still complain then you will stop the metformin if you then give a glp1 they will complain that if this is happening which is really outside like too much of an exaggerated side effect response doesn't make sense then think about this condition uh, so the, about 20 uh, percent of the people may be having that the other thing that is very very common is enzyme deficiency can also happen in type 1 patients over the long period of time and they can then also develop the pancreatic enzyme insufficiency so it's important to identify that once you diagnose this condition it is very important to give them appropriate treatment now a lot of people diagnose it and they don't give the right dose of uh, pancreatic enzyme uh, replacement therapy so the starting dose of Creon is 50,000 units per meal and 25,000 units per snack. 
and this is not just one dose it is basically individualized so if the patient requires more which is judged by the symptom control then you can increase the dose to 75000 or 100000 so each capsule is 25000 units capsule remember that the normal human being will secrete about 750000 units of enzyme so you are only giving about 5 to 10 percent of the replacement dose so therefore don't get alarmed about the number which is 50,000 it sounds like that but it isn't anything so the dose is dictated by the symptom response so the patient should not have any diarrhea after replacement of the therapy they should not complain of any bloating they should also restore their all the things that they had malabsorbed and they had low uh, iron and low b12 this should all pick up after uh, giving them replacement so this is the unique thing about it is you have to cover both sides of the pancreas. You have to give the insulin as well as the pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy. The question is that you need to identify these patients correctly, diagnose them and follow them up. I hope this is helpful for you for your uh, everyday practice. And if you come across a patient you're suspicious of, just send in a fecal last days test. And if it's very low, then you need to correctly diagnose them.